Are you looking for some quick and easy suppers to get on that table in a hurry? Well, keep watching because today I'm sharing some of the absolute easiest dump and go crock pot recipes ever. Hey y'all, I'm Sammy and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be sharing some of my all-time favorite and some new dump and go crock pot recipes just in time for the burr months, <laughs> as I like to call them. We are getting ready to go into fall y'all and we all want some cozy comfort meals cooked right inside our crock pot. So sit back and relax, grab you some tea and let me do all the cooking. Come on y'all, let's go. So we are gonna start this off with some Salisbury meatballs. This is inspired by Miss Alma. She's always in my comments and watches the videos all the time. So this is inspiration from a recipe she sent me. Now I chose to use some frozen meatballs. So that's what we're getting ready to put into a six quart crock pot. It's just a 32 ounce bag. We're just gonna dump them right on in and make sure your crock pot is sprayed though. That way nothing sticks to the side of it. Then we're gonna add a half a cup of diced up onions and then one can it's the larger can so I would say probably about 12 ounces of sliced mushrooms this is totally optional we're gonna season it up with some caramelized onion butter by Kinders all of these are by Kinders because I love their seasonings some buttery garlic and herb goes right on in there as well and then some garlic powder and I'm gonna use some onion powder coming up here in just a second <laughs> I just love my garlic and onion powder. We're also gonna throw in about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce right on over the top of it. And we're gonna take two packs of the brown gravy mix. Any brand is fine. We're gonna mix that with two cups of water and then we'll pour that right over the top of it. And then now the lid goes on this. This cooks on low for four hours. Once the four hours is up, you are left with this beautiful, amazing flavorful dish let me tell you something these meatballs were to die for and if you have the time um, to make your own meatballs that is what the recipe said for miss almas but the frozen meatballs the home style worked just as good and we're just gonna serve these over some homemade mashed potatoes or mashed taters as i call them and we're gonna just sprinkle that with just a little bit of fresh parsley right on top and y'all this was so belly filling and rib sticking good it was down home country cooking in a crock pot next up we're going to make a creamy italian chicken and veggies now this is something i thought of this morning when i went to go and put this in the crock pot before work so i will give you all the measurements into a sprayed six quart crock pot we've got two chicken breasts now these were on the larger side that's why i only use two if they're smaller you might want to use four we're going to season it with some badia complete and add a whole bag of baby red potatoes and then one 12 ounce bag of cut green beans. To that, we're gonna season those with some more Badia Complete because you gotta season with layers. And we're gonna use a half a bottle of the restaurant style Italian dressing. This is a Walmart version of the Olive Garden Italian, which is my favorite. <laughs> we're gonna pop that lid on and we're gonna cook this on a low for about five hours. Then once the five hours is up and trust me your house will smell amazing y'all so good this chicken was absolutely delicious and packed full of flavor because of that dressing now you see how much more liquid is in here i am going to take about half of that out and um because we're getting ready to add the cream part to it. So I chopped those chicken breasts on up and dumped that right back on in and gave that a good old stir together and now we're gonna go ahead and make our cream sauce. So I'm gonna use a half a block of cream cheese and about a half a cup of heavy whipping cream mixed together. We'll pour that right on over the top of it and give it a good old stir together. That way the creaminess of everything gets well mixed. Next up, we're gonna take a half a cup of Parmesan cheese right on over the top of it, give that another stir together. We're gonna pop that lid on for about 15 minutes while you're making some rolls or whatever kind of bread you want to serve it with we just served it with some little parker house yeast rolls 
Mm. Y'all, this was so delicious, but you definitely have to like Italian dressing. If you are new here and you are liking what you see, why don't you go ahead and mash that red subscribe button? I'd love to have you. Next up, we're going to make a barbecued pulled beef. Y'all, this one knocked it out of the park. These are going to be for beef and cheddar sandwiches, and they were amazing. So into a sprayed six-quart crock pot, we're going to go in with a half a cup of onions first. We're going to lay our chuck roast right over the top, and it doesn't matter that it's frozen because it will cook down. We're going to season it with some um, all-purpose seasoning by Kinders, some wood-fired garlic by Kinders. We're also going to come in with some buttery steak calves. Y'all, I love all of the Kinders flavors if you haven't told by now. <laughs> Next, we're going to add another half a cup of chopped up onions. We're going to take one beefy onion soup mix and one cup of water, mix that together, and pour that right over that roast. That way it has some liquid in there to help get that going. Now we're going to use the Kinder's Hickory Brown Sugar Barbecue Sauce, but please feel free to use whatever barbecue sauce y'all's family loves. You'll pop that lid on it and cook it for anywhere 8 to 10 hours. That way it just falls apart. Literally, you'll see that here in just a second. And I can't even begin to tell you about the smell from this roast when I got home from work. Oh my goodness, was it delicious, y'all. All I do here to shred it is just grab um, my little tongs and I literally just pulled that apart. I mean, you can see right here how easy that was to shred. Now I did pull out the fat and stuff because nobody wants that on their sandwich, or at least I don't. <laughs> I added the flavor that I needed but y'all, it was so good. And I just served that up with some quick um, macaroni salad and I had the onion buns with some sliced cheddar. And all I did was put a piece of cheddar on the bread, put that beef right over top of it, put some more cheddar on it and slathered it in barbecue sauce. And like I said, I served this up with some macaroni salad. I'll have that recipe linked down below. Next, we're going to make a family favorite, which is cheesy taters and sausage casserole. You cannot go wrong with this one because it is perfect for fall. And since we are September 1st, y'all, can y'all believe it? <laughs> this is absolutely perfect for a cozy meal coming up. I'm just going to take these beef and cheddar sausages and slice them on up. I had some frozen hash browns, and then I also sliced up about one to two russet potatoes too, and just shredded those right on up. So that's why you see the shreds and the cubes right there. But hey, you use what you have because that's why you budget. <laughs> it's all budget friendly. We're going to season that up with some salt and pepper, dump those better cheddar sausages right on top. Next up, We'll add about a cup of cheese to the top of that, and then we are going to start mixing our cream of soups. So I have, into a large bowl, one cup of onions, diced up, one can of the cheddar cheese soup, and one can of the cream of chicken. Now these are just the standard Campbell size ounces. Eight ounces of sour cream and about a tablespoon of the Badia Complete Seasoning. You could use whatever complete seasoning that you want to. You don't have to use the Badia. But once you have that mixed together, this just gets dumped right over top of those cheese and taters and sausage. Just smooth that out as best as you can and give it a good mix through right in the crock pot. And we are going to top this with another cup of cheese, y'all. Don't be scared. I love me cheese, you know, mo cheese, mo better. I gotta say it in every video. <laughs> this cooked on low for about five hours and everything was so tender and so flavorful. I just served it with a little bit of parsley right on top and some extra cheese. And y'all, this one was delicious, so good. Next up is a definitely a family favorite with this cheesy chicken, broccoli, and rice casserole. You cannot beat it, y'all. It is so, so good, but so easy. Into a sprayed eight-quart crock pot, we have got two pounds of chicken that has been cubed up and cleaned up. <laughs> we'll just go and put that right on in there. And now we're going to go ahead and season that with some Badia Complete, some buttery poultry blend by Kinder's, buttery garlic and herb by Kinder's as well, and then one packet of ranch dressing. Now we're just gonna mix this right here in the crock pot. It is quick, simple, and easy, and this is all you have to do. Get you a chicken and broccoli and a cheddar broccoli, nor rice sides, dump that right over that chicken. You cannot be any easier than this, y'all, and this one 
is so good. One can of cream of chicken soup right over the top, along with one can of cream of mushroom. Now you can use two cans of cream of chicken if you want to, but I like to mix it. Now with those empty cans, we're just gonna go ahead and fill them right on up with some chicken broth or chicken stock into each one, and you'll dump both of those right over the top. Now you'll pop that lid right on top of it once you give it a good stir together and cook that on low for about two hours. Once that time is up, you'll give it another stir once you add some cheese to the top of it, of course. And we are going to chop up two cups of broccoli. Now I used frozen broccoli, but you could use fresh if you want to. It's just frozen works better because you only have about another 15 to 20 minutes to cook that broccoli in here. So I chose to use the frozen. So now we're gonna go ahead and give that a good stir together just to make sure that broccoli and that cheese that we added to the top is well mixed together. Now y'all, you know you gotta have more cheese on top. So I used a garlic and herb cheese and a sharp cheddar right on top of that. And all we are gonna do is just place that lid right back on top of it and that heat from it will get it nice and ooey gooey in about 15 to 20 minutes and that broccoli will be so tender. Now this does stay on low, of course, for those 15 to 20 minutes, but it cooks it perfectly. And would y'all just look at this? Oh my goodness. Now I just served it up with a little bit of extra cheese because y'all know me, mo cheese, mo better. And does this not look delicious? And trust me, your belly's gonna thank you too because it was amazing. If you're new here, how about giving me a thumbs up, hitting that like button, and also join my family by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to have y'all. Okay, y'all, so last but not least is a pizza pasta casserole, and this one is brought to you by my sweet friend, Erin. It is inspired by her, and it is a 10 out of 10. So into a large bowl, I put a pound of ground beef with about a half a cup of diced up onions already in there with eight ounces of tomato sauce. Now we're gonna take um, six ounces of your tomato paste and put that right on in over the top of it. Next, we're gonna add in about 24 ounces of marinara sauce. You could use pizza sauce. I think that's what the recipe originally calls for, but I love marinara sauce and it's pretty much the same thing. So you'll just give that a good old stir together just to make sure everything is well combined. Now spray a six quart crock pot with some nonstick spray and I boiled um, about 16 ounces of noodles. So I'm gonna put about a third of those noodles right into the bottom along with a third of that sauce. And I'm just gonna spread that around before we add in some sliced up pepperoni. So you'll do about a third cup of that pepperoni and I sliced up about a cup and a half of the pepperoni. Next up, you're gonna add in about a half a cup of cheese over that because it takes a cup and a half of cheese. And then another third of the pasta, a third of the sauce. Smooth that out again. And we're just gonna keep repeating them layers, y'all. Mm, this was amazing. I can't wait to have leftovers tonight for supper. <laughs> So we'll just dust dump the rest of that pasta in there and the rest of that remaining sauce over. Make sure you got you a nice bed of that sauce right over the top of it. Now on this one, I'm switching it up. I'm gonna put the cheese first and smooth that all out. And then we will add the sliced up pepperoni, whatever was remaining and right over to the top of it. Oh, this was so good. I just I cannot rave enough about it. <laughs> but once you have your pepperonis right over the top, and you could always add some more veggies in there if you want to as well. It's completely customizable to your likings. But this goes on high for two hours or low for four, just until it's nice and warm through and that cheese is melted. I cooked mine on high for two, and you can see that it is done perfectly. Oh my goodness, this was just cheesy happiness in a crock pot so so good i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please give me a big old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and become part of my youtube family that way you never miss another set of delicious recipes ever again so let's get right on into these bloopers y'all i didn't have too many but i had enough of them and i know y'all love them i cannot believe i've done that all in one take again y'all i'm on a roll I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's finally clicking after almost three years of doing this. I ain't gonna promise it. Oh, was that thunder? I see blue skies, but then I see yucky skies over there. That might have been thunder, y'all. We expecting some bad storms today. This is Saturday. Y'all see this video tomorrow. I'm a procrastinator. 
in true fashion. <laughs> All right, let's get this outro done. Outro, 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 outro. Ooh. My dog probably wouldn't know what to think if they lived with the same person. I wouldn't know what to think if I was saying. Just say. All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. I truly hope you enjoyed it and it gave you some inspiration of something to make for your family during these. No, that's not it. So I can do the intro on tape, but I can't do the outro. Now you tell me what the difference is. Nope, that's not it either. Hmm, I don't say that first. Why can't I get this right? I did it. I did it. It only took me two times, Pepe. It only took me two times. Happy Saturday or Sunday when y'all see this. All right, y'all. That is it for today's video. I truly hope you enjoyed it and it gave you some ideas of something new to make for your family using that handy dandy crock pot. And if you are in need of prayer, please let me know down below. I would be honored to pray for you all. And if you are looking for some other meal inspiration, check out these other two videos on your screen right now. And until next time, God bless. Bye.